how does the Call the Devil album differ from your previous works, maybe especially from uh, A Wonderful Life? You know, I feel it's kind of an extension from, uh, you know, A Wonderful Life, but <clears throat> it's definitely got a little more aggression to it. And even the the softer songs are have a little more sinister tone, like everything's a little darker, it's a little creepier at times. Um, and there's more diversity like all over as far as styles this this album has a lot to offer what was kind of the inspiration behind the creation of call the devil you know this one came across very uh uh it was very spontaneous very organic we didn't really talk about a lot of the ideas um beforehand we just went in and started recording some ideas whether it was a melody from a vocal or a piano or a, like we'd go in my brother and i um, gravy who's on two tracks you know we w- would always just walk in he'd play guitar and i play drums and we would just record it and then go back and listen and find little sections that we liked and then you kind of work from there so everything was very spontaneous this time from your point of view how was uh, gravy's return after the long hiatus oh it was really fun and you know a lot of it was just like riding a bike like i had said it was spontaneous we didn't really talk about anything we just kind of sat down and started just jamming and recording and listening to what was coming back you know we'd play for like a half hour straight and could stop and then go and listen to it and find little sections that were just worth working on and um <clears throat> you know the first couple times we got together we didn't even record we just laughed talked about movies just caught up watched stuff on youtube and then started to get into other things you know technical stuff like what guitar heads to try and mic configurations and what guitars and you know got nerdy with it for a minute and then once we started recording it was it just kind of was very organic spontaneous and it just wrote itself what are the standout tracks for you from the new album you know personally one of my favorites is the first track eye to eye that was that was one of the first things gravy and i had recorded when we first sat down and started recording again and uh, it turned into the first song love that one it's really aggressive and in your face and uh i really like the way i'm not sure of the track number but it's called uiop i really like the way that that one came out it's not really a traditional song structure so to speak but it's very mushroom head in the way of it just kind of takes you on a little journey and um, it gets twisted i really like that one it's somewhere between i said this before nightmare before christmas meets the exorcist you said that you weren't like overthinking things but uh how does the new album reflect the band's like uh mindset and artist artistic uh, direction at the moment well it, it definitely is like i mentioned before it's diverse and there's a lot of different tempos different key changes um i think you know where we're at currently we like to keep ourselves um you know not so much guessing but kind of take ourselves out of our comfort zone sometimes and that l- lends into uh you know completely different art forms or just even different styles and you'll hear that throughout the album we did a lot of different tempos and key changes Just even songs in different keys. Band that has been around for 30 years. Um, how do you balance that, you know, staying uh, innovative and then maybe true to your roots? Well, you know, I think staying true to your roots is, is pretty easy. Uh, I think the, the hard part is not just relying on those roots and staying, like I said, getting out of your comfort zone is important because it can almost become stale and redundant making the same kind of stuff, which just is only your roots. I think it's important to always expand Uh, be um, experimental and try things that are whether it's new or modern or it doesn't even have to be new or modern or current or it could be anything older but uh, as an influence but try to bring that to the table something you haven't tried before you may find a whole new love for the craft if we can go a bit back in time again like uh, the introduction of Chucky Ponza to the band uh, how do you see her impact on Mushroom Head? Well, I think it's it's showing mo- every time we do something with her, it's just you know more and more of an impact. Um, it, it's great to see uh, so many fans, n- new and old, uh, you know, be open to um, you know expanding the sound and the brand, so to speak. Uh, and again, her her abilities uh, live and just in the studio, the way they texture and complement and contrast some of the vocals sometimes where it's not, she's not lead vocal, but she's tucked in there. It becomes very angelic or very 
ghost-like. Um, it's just an element that we really weren't able to, you know, have and play with before. So in many ways, I think she, she has a huge, huge uh, a compliment to the band. You said that it was like riding a bike, but what, on the other hand, were the challenging things in making Call the Devil? You know, um, some of it was, the, I think the most challenging thing was kind of knowing when to stop. <laughs> um, we kind of always want to keep trying another idea or, you know, like if we would have had more time, there probably would have been more songs, to be honest with you. So the most challenging one. And then also, you know, not everyone lives in the same state. So, uh, you know, logistics and you just getting things together for studio sessions and things like that. It's it's not always as easy as everyone thinks because this one was done in sessions and, you know, two weeks on a couple songs here, three weeks on a couple songs here. Um, It wasn't like four months straight or anything. This one was broken up. How were the recording sessions for you? They were great. And, and like I said, they were real easy because they weren't like big stretches of time. And it wasn't like, oh, we have to write a whole album. We just kind of got together and started writing some stuff. And then mm. next time we got together, just worked on completely different material. And then got together again and worked on yet again, completely different materials. Started listening to some of the old stuff. And, you know, working on it a little bit. But every time we got together, we just kept mo moving forward and collecting one or two ideas that were strong enough to turn into a song eventually. So uh, it was it was fun. It went quick, but it wasn't like this daunting task of we have five months to make an album. We just kind of did it in little sections and took our time. And the, like I said, a lot of it was like riding a bike. It rode itself. So it, it was very, some of it was very quick. And then some of it, you know, the slower songs tend to take longer and the you know, slower, longer songs always take longer. They seem like they take way longer. It's like sometimes, you know, they're, they're seven minute songs, but they feel like they're 20 minutes. <laughs> Mushroom Head has been at it since uh, the early 90s or 93. So how do you kind of see that huge journey and uh, evolution of the band from those years? It's really incredible, you know, when you step outside and look at it, how generational it's become. Uh, you'll see people that used to come to the shows in their early 20s, you know, now in their late 30s or early 40s, and now they're bringing their kids. You know, their kids are five, six years old, and, you know, they absolutely love singing along, especially all the all the swear words. So, um, you know, it, it, like I said, it's become generational. It's, it's truly, truly something that um, I, I find just amazing every time I see it. What are the biggest things uh, from your point of view that have changed from those days? Or is there something that you miss from the salad days? You know, the, I think the only thing I really miss is everyone, you know, having they didn't have phones in their hands back in the day. Um, it felt like you had a crowd's undivided attention and people were living in the moment. And, um, I, I, you know, I, I was able to live through that and see the difference in the crowds. And I, you know, and I know it's been 30 years, so you know, lifestyles and people and everything changes the way people get their media and they get all their information now. It's it's right in the minute. But there was a time, <laughs> not many people remember, but when that stuff didn't exist and you were just at a show and you were there sweating and singing along every word and living in the moment, and there was no one else to share it with except maybe someone next to you enjoying it right then and there, living in the moment. I think has been uh, one of the biggest things I probably, you know, miss. And I, 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 you know, I might sound old, but I, I feel it's unfortunate. A lot of people never got to experience it like that. How was the creative process behind the new masks for this album? This this one was real fun. Uh, I have to give uh, credit to Joe Gall, who was also our new guitar player on the album. He designed and sculpted uh Uh, six of the new masks and the other sculptor is uh, a, a friend of ours who we worked with before his name is jordan Patton, and um he's a, a well-known special effects guy too and like i said we worked with him before so he really understands the band and the brand and super talented guy so um you know a lot of that stuff is custom made to each individual band member's head so there's head cast done so they fit proper like the eyes are in the right place and the you know ears so we can hear because it's not easy to see and hear out of those masks um but those are the two guys yeah joe gall and uh jordan Patton, who designed the new ones man just incredible guys inc incredible work where do you see mushroom head going from here like is there some concrete future plans or goals you know i mean we're just to obviously keep you know spreading the word we just put the new album out we're going to do some touring in the united states here in october 
and um you know hopefully be able to follow up with another video we'll see um but you know right now it's just to go ahead and start pushing this new brand of mushroom head that's 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 current and with the you know the current album um just coming out a couple of weeks ago we're super excited Back to the-